Hi beauties. All right, we are in day four of our hollow week. If you've been along with us, we have done so far a, a candy corn eye look, a pumpkin. What did we do? Oh, Dark Angel. Yeah, because that's our that's our name. Aha. Today is, you might not be able to tell based on what I'm wearing up top, but today is going to be a really, really exciting one for us. This is the Glow Addict uh, PR competition submission piece, and it is going to be a clown. Like I said, on the top, it's very hard to figure out what clowns were on the top, but on the bottom, look, I got like a tutu and I got like some bright colors tights and stuff and then we also found on Amazon this super really just adorably cute wig we're gonna do pigtails and stuff with it but I there was with the bangs there was no way I was gonna be able to do my makeup with it so I just have it ready for the wig cap and then away we'll go glow addict this month oh well, something's slopping around in there I should have been more careful with that glow addict this month did a whole neon vibe feel I'm not I pro I was thinking I may use the brushes probably not I've got my paint brushes here for like the special effects makeup I'll probably just use those I don't want to mess up these brushes for what I'm gonna do today but the things that I really want to focus on featuring are these really pretty Illuminati gel paint electric pink and blue eyeliners and then our little stack of uh, very very neon colors we have pretty much all the primary colors here and then we've got uh, you know red is the primary color and they got this is more pink but whatever um, but the, then you got orange and green we got all we got all our, our most important basic colors is what I'm trying to say if you guys have been with us through the series you know that we also have a topic that we talk about that is somehow related to the costume for each video so today's topic was kind of challenging to come up with if I'm being honest um, because I didn't I didn't I never want to seem like I'm being insensitive about something so when people think clowns and things that are scary I think a lot of people automatically think of John Wayne Gacy's I really was like I want to do something that at least references that but isn't like insensitive like I don't want somebody to sit here and ever watch me and be like oh you're doing clown makeup and talking about a serial killer who like part of his thing was that he dresses as a clown that's tasteless so I I didn't do that so instead what I figured is let's talk about why are people afraid of clowns like the psychology behind it um different like factoids and things like that we'll kind of go through like a brief history of like what the clown was in different forms of, of theater and and literature and how it's how the media has kind of shaped the image of a clown which is supposed to be this comedic relief and this uh this entity that brings joy and has taken that image and made it into something that is more associated with with fear i think a lot of people are very afraid of clowns how that happened and why it was such a good vessel to uh, to become ultimately something that we should be afraid of so that's the game plan for today uh, do I have an idea for the look I have a, a vague idea I have thoughts but I don't have like a clear image so let's hope this goes well I also have some things I'm going to uh, be testing out some of the things that I wanted to test out in the series haven't worked my eyebrows for instance I once again tried the glue chick glue stick trick to get them to disappear it did not work at all so i just wiped it off and figured i'd just figure it out <laughs> if you guys watched the pumpkin one you got to see me struggle with that a little bit so i figured i'd just save you the trouble today which is for the best because once again didn't work out so let's go let's go i do have as my base white i have this uh white foundation mixing pigment from la girl i don't know if it's gonna work to make it as white as i want it to so i do have a little bit of um pro air like the stuff that goes in my air brush but I don't use my airbrush I may just mix a little bit of that, that in to give it like a little bit of a deeper color if I need to but I'm hoping this will do enough so why are people afraid of clowns uh, I guess where we need to start is defining uh, chlorophobia so that is the extreme or irrational fear of clowns and it is incredibly rare I think a lot of people say oh you're afraid of clowns you must have chlorophobia and it's it's not really the case yeah that may actually work out well I may not need oh ho, ho. oh ho, ho. Look at us making things happen. So that is just not something that is very common. The, that kind of fear of clowns is like debilitating. Like you can't think about them, you can't be around them, you, you know, are around them, then you're gonna have a panic attack. People like their lives are somehow hindered by the constant fear that a clown is gonna pop up. That is the type of fear. It it has to be at that level. And it didn't have to, it didn't have to be, but it's it's closer to that level than just like a, you see a clown and you're like, I hate those. Those are really creepy. That is what most people have. A lot of people have that discomfort towards clowns, but to have like an actual diagnosed textbook fear of it is, is a little bit more challenging. So that's the name. That's the term that's often thrown around when, when people begin to talk about 
the fear of clowns. So the media has kind of capitalized on this. I think natural aversion is the right way to uh, to describe how most people feel about clowns. It's really, it, it kind of, it's deeper than just like a an unsettled nature with them. It's more of like a, a natural aversion to them because they just don't seem to fit what people think. They they should be normal, but they're, they're different because of their extreme painted features and their ridiculous outfits. And so people are just kind of like, like I should, recognize you but I, I can't and that unsettles me and that I think that's where the the discomfort comes for most people I'm gonna do a brief history of the clown it's incredibly long uh, we spent Nikki and I both in college when we were in our theater degree we both had to take a uh, history of theater courses there's a part one and a part two for us that was fine uh, this we like history so it didn't bother us a lot of that uh, throughout history you can see that all these different forms of theater had some sort of a clown archetype so there's a lot to talk about a lot to dig into there but i just have a, a, a quick little rundown to give you guys like some ideas so the first version of the clown we actually see images of it in two 2500 BC in Egypt, there were um, clown-like characters that would perform for the pharaohs. Then of course we have um, the Greek and the Roman theater, which that really kind of made theater what it is. And so in that version, we see these buffoon type characters are very much physical. It's all physical comedy. There's a lot of like butt slapping and that was like prime comedy back then. So um, people loved it. They were normally seen as comedic characters and a lot of times they were making fun of the poorer class. Um, so there is this kind of like, kind of a murky beginning to them. It's a lot of times it is like making fun of more rural people or more less educated people. And so nowadays, especially looking back on it, that gives a lot of people um, kind of pause anyway, because they're like, well, it's a character that was created to mock those who are the less fortunate and the rich people would sit there and watch it and think it was hysterical. So that's kind of, <laughs> but what are you gonna do? So then after we get out of Greek and ancient Roman theater, we see really in, in the medieval times, we see this minstrel character pop up and that's kind of the first image of the early art of like clowning, like where it's like very exaggerated moves and it's kind of what you think about like, you know, pulling the, not, it's not obviously, it's not pulling the really long handkerchief out of your pocket or whatever, but it's that kind of idea behind it. Like the really just ridiculous, exaggerated movements and stuff like that. Um, and then in the late in middle ages, um, we see travel performance start to really take shape. Um, where troops would go around and they would perform in different areas and they would stay for a little bit of time and they would you know, get paid for being there and for performing and then they would move on to another town. And when we see this, um, you, you also see like a court, like the court jester kind of pops up as well. And of course they were, um, they were the only people in the kingdom allowed to mock any sort of royalty. It was kind of, you know, that was their shtick. They would just make fun of everybody and they, um, yeah, they, they had, a, they had it kind of easy. So, all right, I'm jumping in my first glow addict products. I've got the two eyeliners. I, I'm, I have an image on how to, to, what to do with these, but we'll see if it actually works. So, wow, that is like a really, that's a really creamy texture. I like that. I like that. I wanted to just do a small eyebrow, but now I'm trying to cover up all my hair that wouldn't be covered up by the glue stick. So here we are. Those are cool. I like those a lot. That's really cool. So then we move into Commedia dell'arte and Commedia dell'arte did a lot for theater and it did a lot for clowning as well. Um, so these were traveling uh, troops of actors in Italy primarily and they featured the, uh, I'm, gonna, I'm gonna mess it up, but I believe it's the Arlecchino or the Arlecchino and it is the Harlequin character. And uh, this this is what they start to be, they call it like the art of the zany or the character is a, considered a zany. Basically it's amusingly unconventional. So it just doesn't match what people expect. And because it doesn't match that, then people just automatically think like, oh, that's so weird. Why is it so weird? That's so funny. This kind of morphed into, this, this zany character morphs into this acrobatic trickster and um, he carries around a slapstick and would hit people with it. And that's where we get the term slapstick humor. So now we have like the image, I'm gonna I'm move into like the image of the clown. So we're 
with all these clowns and everything, where did we start to see this kind of like, this stereotypical white face, bright makeup, big smiled character take place? And now throughout all of these, um, masks were often utilized and the clown masks were always very exaggerated in terms of their facial features. Like that was part of it. It was part of the uh, performance and masks were a very easy way to uh, portray the same character no matter who was performing it or where it was being performed. And so it really, um, that's why masking has, has, and for so long, especially uh, back then, really just kind of dominated the, oh wow, it's blue and pink, it's giving me like the new age Harley Quinn vibes. <laughs> I didn't mean to do that, but here we are. The masks really made it effective to to create these characters and keep them the same. And and a lot of times the clown masks were the most entertaining because they were so hyper exaggerated. I mean, all the masks were exaggerated, but theirs were they're wild. The exaggerated features and everything that's something we've seen from the very beginning. But the word clown itself it didn't appear until the mid 1500s. At that point, it kind of was used to either refer to somebody who was foolish, or it also would be referring to like poorer class. And then we see Shakespeare start to use it in certain plays. These English performances, specifically Shakespeare's troupe in the 17th century, really helped introduce um, the clown to other areas, specifically Germany. And there are two well-known English clowns, um, William Kemp and Robert Armin, or Armin, I don't, I'm not positive, um, which were, they were both associated with um, Shakespeare's troupe and they kind of um, helped to form the initial like image of the clown, but then when Germany becomes introduced with, with Shakespeare's work and specifically with the clown character, we see the these stereotypical images that are uh, kind of associated with today's known clown form. Um, so in Germany, they had this character Pickle Herring and he wore giant shoes and the hats and a waistcoat and ruffles around his neck and wrists. And so that's kind of where we start to see um, the, the clothing in these exaggerated clothing pieces take place. And then a French character by the name of, I'm gonna, I'm gonna mess this up, I already know. Piero or Pedrolino, they went by both names, introduced the white face makeup, which makes sense knowing with mimes and everything in France that it, it makes sense that that's kind of where that was introduced. So that's kind of the brief overview history. Where did this fear association come from? We've kind of, we kind of talked about it. Um, clowns were supposed to be sheerly entertainers. They were supposed to, you know, be people who performed for children and, and made people laugh. And in a way, especially in history, when they were being, um, when they were performing for like royal courts and stuff like that, they were allowed to get away with a lot more than what normal people could get away with. So when did it kind of morph into this, like we're somebody we should be unsettled by? There have been in history and in, in all of these different things, there have been characters who are kind of the idea of the malicious clown. They're tricksters or they, um, they have murderous intentions or they're, you know, using cunning, na their cunning nature to try and, and trick somebody into thinking that they are stupid and then, you know, swindling them or murdering them or what, whatever. So that does exist. We really don't see like an image of a truly like bad clown come out until very, very much later on. So we'll go back to the fear of the unknown really quickly because we talked about that briefly at the beginning. The, the image of the clown is to most people very unsettling um, and it's unsettling for the sheer reason that, oh God. Okay, I'm gonna try this with water because I was hoping it would activate it, but it may not work with water. It may, we may have to do it with powder and then it's, there's gonna be fallout everywhere. Okay, so this, I'm gonna just, as a tangent, this does not work wet. I was really thinking it would work well wet, it doesn't. So that's, uh, it's been a nightmare trying to make this work so far. So we're just gonna switch gears and, and go from there. Okay, uh, I was trying to fix it off camera. It's going awry, but we'll 
muscle through because we always do. We talked about because these uh, exaggerated features made the face recognizable, but it was not normal. Nobody's face actually looked like that. Um, that added to it. But there was also this sense of um, like this painted smile and the, all this pa face paint. It just didn't allow people to, to be able to tell what the true intention or the true emotions behind the character and the person, the, the person behind the character were, which is also very unsettling. There's this, um, this need to kind of, gauge somebody's safe sa safety or danger based on you know kind of how they um how they look in the first few seconds of meeting them and, and clowns just don't really allow that both of those factors i think add significantly to this idea of um of the evil clown um, in 2008, they actually, um, there was a study conducted at the University of Sheffield in England, and it found that most children hated clowns, which is incredibly important to know because, I mean, obviously clowns are targeted towards children most of the time. But also when you think about like children's hospitals and things like that, um, the image of the clown has been utilized forever because it was thought to bring joy and happiness in this kind of a dark time for these kids. And it turns out most of them were very afraid of these clowns. So, so it kind of help people be like, oh, maybe we should reconsider that decor option. Now, then we're gonna move into, we're gonna move into now into the, the portrayal of the clown in the media. And when the, this kind of bad image of the clown took shape, really took shape. One of the big ones, one of the big initial ones is in the 1940s, of course, we see the first Batman comic and his, his primary villain has and always has, will be, the Joker and the Joker was seen in the very first Batman comic. In that original, now we've seen it kind of morph. The Joker's been given a backstory since then. Many portrayals of the Joker have come out. But in that original comic, the Joker was just kind of this vicious psychotic murderer um, who wore a white face and clown makeup and a suit and just wanted to wreak havoc with, with no backstory. They didn't give him an initial backstory. It didn't come out until I think much later, actually. I think it was closer to the 60s when we first start to see the Joker's backstory. I could be wrong. That may not, don't quote me on that, but see that where it's light? That's where I tried to use the glue stick and it's coming back to bite me in the ass. And I, I don't think I'm gonna be able to fix that. That's unfortunate. All right. So now let's talk about um, the real life case that made people um, take notice of the clown. Let's 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 call, let's call it that. So this is of course the John Wayne Gacy case. And um, on December twenty first of nineteen seventy eight, John Wayne Gacy was arrested. Um, and what the police wound up uncovering was something that even they didn't realize was as bad as it was going to be. He was what is known as the real life killer clown. He was responsible for the kidnapping, rape, and murder for of at least thirty three um, young men in Chicago throughout the 1970s. I say at least is that's how many names or that's how many people he said that he killed and he seemed to take pretty good records and keep good track of like his victims. So that is what it is thought to be. Um, but there are still some bodies that were never recovered. So there could be, there could be more victims. Um, and I think people know that, but they always kind of think 33 is the safest bet. Cause that is what Gacy himself admitted to. Just to get some understanding is, uh, he suffered from child abuse and he had an alcoholic father who was just always disappointed in him. Um, he did suffer from sexual abuse too, but I, I couldn't find like who it was that had abused him. Don't I don't think it was his father, but it just pretty much in every report about it, it did say that he suffered some sort of um, sexual trauma as a child as well. He already had this kind of um, traumatic upbringing that he uh, he was dealing with. And then on top of that, as a child, he was caught several times dressing in women's clothing. So it is thought that he was most likely aware that he was, whether he was attracted to women at all or not, he was a homosexual or he was bisexual or something. He had he had um, desires towards men that he didn't want to have because he knew like his father would be not supportive of it. So that is something that to, to take into account. Um, he was a really sensitive kid though. He liked to cook. He spent a lot of time with his mother and his sister. I think the hardest part of this case is he really had this kind of facade where people just never expected him to do this. He was a really likable kid. He, and young man, he became successful at an early age. He was involved in local politics. He was running for an office. I think the late 1960s, probably, that sounds right. And he was involved with this group uh, called the Jolly Jokers. And these were a group of people who got together and they dressed like clowns and they would perform at children's hospitals or charity functions or birthday parties. 
and their whole goal was just to bring, you know, clowning happiness to, to as many people as possible. He had several different personas as a clown. He had uh, Pogo the Clown, which is how he's mainly known that people normally refer to him as Pogo, because I think that was his main one. And then Patches the Clown. And actually when he was, not right before he was arrested, when he was being interviewed, when the cops were suspecting him, he tried to play hard into like, oh, look how innocent I am. So he would, you know, let the, the cops come into his house and he would give them drinks and, you know, he would be cordial and friendly with them. I think probably in the hopes that it was going to throw off suspicion. He actually, in one remark said, you know, clowns can get away with murder. More or less saying that because he was disarming and so likable that he, people would never suspect him. So, and that is a quote that is thrown around all the time. People talk about this and they, they talk about that quote all the time. It's like, well, see. Gacy was caught after several young men had gone missing around him. And um, one of them was last seen talking to Gacy before his disappearance. Um, so that is how the police um, got on his trail. He had also had a prior arrest for um, allegations as, as to um, being inappropriate. I don't know if it was, I think it was just like molestation charges, but with two minor boys. And so he had served a little bit of time. So he was already in the database. Once the cops got his trail, um, they wound up, because he was so cordial with them, they wound up getting access to his house and they could smell death is how they described it. They could smell death. And um, when everything was said and done, they discovered um, the graves of countless young men under his house and neat little plots in his cross space. And um, I say countless because I don't, all 33 were not there. It was close to, it was over 20. I think it was maybe there was like 27 bodies in the, and then he admitted to a couple more as well. So it was, it's a truly horrifying story. It's really a very um, sad circumstance. The nation was absolutely shocked by it, especially since it was this man who seemed to overall be a pretty decent person, except he like wasn't, he was a truly a monster. So it was a really hard case. Um, it was very hard, I think, for a lot of people to understand kind of what happened and, and how this could be somebody who does seem so normal as just an absolute monster under the surface. So after this case, you really do start to see a rise in like media coverage of, I say media coverage, that's the wrong word, media portrayals of like evil clowns. Nowadays, if you were to like Google like, oh, movies for, you know, with killer clowns, there's a list that's like a freaking million years long because there have been just so many different depictions of an evil clown in different settings and in different reasons and in circuses and in just everything. So some of the big ones that I felt like I wanted to discuss would be, of course, Stephen King's It. Um, now it's especially relevant right now because we've just seen the remakes, but the original novel was published in September of uh, 1986. And then we saw the TV miniseries that came out with an incredibly huge cast. And even for the time, I mean, a lot of them were still kind of coming up into the spotlight, but um, I mean, we had Tim Curry as it himself. So it's, it, there's a ton well-known people in that movie. And that was in 1990. It was not good if you haven't seen the original. It's not, it's very, actually very boring, but it's, I mean, it's worth watching. And then you have the remakes that came out, which I personally loved. I was a huge fan of the remakes. Those of course were in 2017 and 2019. So it's very present still. I idea this concept that's been around since the late eighties. And uh, if you haven't seen the movies or you don't know the concept, basically uh, the main killer is an interdimensional. He's an alien more or less who feeds on fear and he normally takes shape in the form of a clown and he, um, he stalks and eats children primarily. Definitely creepy. I <laughs> definitely understand why it was a very nice vessel for people to kind of develop this, this aversion to clowns. In fact, the original It was the first time I ever got like a, an unsettling inclination towards clowns because I had a neighbor. This is just a backstory. It's not necessary, but it is kind of funny. I had a neighbor um, in my old neighborhood and she was a little bit older than me. We used to play together and we had this creek in our backyard and she told me that Pennywise lived there and he was going to kill me. And my mom was like, what? And I was like, yeah, I, I mean, that's, that's what she told me. And my mom was like, I'm not sure you should hang out with her anymore. And I was like, I only have like three friends, mom. You're really gonna take one of them away. Fun story, yeah. Then of course we have Poltergeist. I had Poltergeist in there. People don't think about it, but that cl that clown doll and Poltergeist is terrifying. So I think that's really, it's a really important moment in this image of the, 
evil clown. It's one of the, also one of the first images of the evil clown that I can remember is that movie. And of course, if you haven't seen it, then there is a doll. It's, you know, the, the house is dealing with a poltergeist. And one of the things that happens is this clown doll, this puppet doll um, comes in and he sucks up the little boy into the, under the bed. Terrify, it's a terrifying moment, I hate it. And then just as like a little, let me throw it in there type thing, cause we're coming to a close, which means I'll probably finish up most of the rest of it off camera because I, I feel like I have to do a lot to save this look. There's this movie, I'm sure, I'm sure not a lot of people know it. It's called Terrifier. I just happened to stumble upon it on Netflix. It was done in 2016 and Tangent, and this is a nice little leeway into Tangent. Of course, 2016, we saw these, this massive amounts of people who began to dress up as clowns and just scare people randomly, just complete strangers. They would just show up and terrify them. And people really started to get unsettled. And I think it was, to me, it was more unsettling, less because it was clowns, but more because there was like this purge sense to it. It was like, what is happening? Like, why are all these people all over the world? It started in, I think, I think Colorado maybe. There was a movie actually that was being done and they, this was done as a publicity stunt and then there was just like a random clown that showed up and people were like, what's going on there? And then from there it, it's morphed, it morphed into this um, very real, very terrifying moment where everybody was kind of uncertain as to what was, um, what was happening, why were all these clowns showing up? And so um, 2016 was very, it was a very weird year for the, the clowns. It was, you know, there's a lot of associations with like anarchy and stuff with like people were trying to figure it out and I'm not sure that there was anything to figure out. I'm sure people who were doing it were, but there was this very real fear that came from this time when all these clowns were just showing up and just causing mayhem. And so, so yeah, so we've seen, certainly in the last few years, we've seen even more of a focus on this, this clown terror. Um, you would think, you know, the more, but anyway, so 2016. So we had that happening in 2016 as well. Well, that same year, this movie, Terrifier comes out. And I watched it, I think last year, like around Halloween. So in this movie, Terrifier, there is a, the villain is Art the Clown. Literally one of the creepiest clown portrayals I've ever seen. It is a very weird movie. It's not necessarily good, but it's very gruesome. And I just didn't know what to expect with it. And it wound up being like a lot. It's, I recommend watching it. It was on Netflix last time I checked. Um, I haven't gone back and looked for it. And like I said, I watched it last year, but it definitely was like this very unsettling portrayal of a clown. No spoilers, but at one point he cuts a woman in half. Like he, she's like chained to the ceiling and he just like cuts straight down, like from the crotch down to her head. And I was like, oh, we're doing that, okay. So yeah, um, I, I definitely I definitely think that the clown has, um, I, don't, I don't know anybody who's like, I like clowns. Not anybody who's like not got a little bit of something going on. I don't know. Maybe if you like clowns, I'm not judging. I just, I think most people associate clowns with like fear nowadays. Do I think it's right? No, of course not. I mean, they just have, you know, been portrayed to They've just been portrayed in a bad way. I don't think that they're like all clowns are evil or anything like that. But I wanted to, when I was trying to think about what to talk about with this topic, I was like, we could talk about a lot of things. But I really think that that's some like an aspect we just don't really think about is is the why. Why are we so afraid of it? Like com communally, I think so many people out there are like, oh yeah, I don't like clowns. And it's, it's very interesting. Like, why is that the case? So that is why I decided to do this for today's topic. I'm gonna go ahead and finish up off camera and then I'll come back with a wig and everything. We'll see how the final look turned out. All right, this is the final look. Honestly, I wish I had turned out better if I'm being just 100% honest. It's not terrible. I just, I had higher hopes for it. We have done four days now of our Halloween. week. If you like the video, give it a thumbs up. If you, uh, if you like us and you wanna see us continue this journey, we've got three more days and I'm really excited about it. Um, we've filmed, this is as we're filming it today, we filmed four of them and we've got three more to do. I'm there with you on the journey. We've got three more. Um, so yeah, subscribe so you can see us post a lot of other videos and stuff. Um, I will say before I close out the wig, loving the wig, really, I'm a big fan of it. Other than that, I hope you guys are all safe, healthy, you have a wonderful day and you stay girly with the dark twist.